Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lesson 17. In this lesson, we're going to cover how to ask questions in Arabic. So the simplest way to ask a question in Arabic is to just add the word hal or the prefix a, that alif at the beginning of a sentence. And that converts a question, uh, that converts a sentence from a declaration into a question. So let's take a look at an example. Antum shakirun. You all are grateful. Antum, you all. Shakirun is the plural of shakir, so it means grateful people. So you all are grateful. If I put the word hal at the beginning, then it changes that to are you all grateful? Hal antum shakirun? Similarly, I can take the sentence fi qulubihim maradun. In their hearts is a disease. Qulub here means hearts. Qulubihim, their hearts. Maradun, disease. And if I put the word a, the prefix alif at the beginning of this sentence, it changes it to afi qulubihim maradun. Is there a disease in their hearts? So it changes it into a, into a question. Now that alif, that prefix a, is oftentimes used with the words la, wa, and fa. Okay, and I'll give you a few examples. So typically la by itself means, you know, do not. So la ta'kulun, you do not eat. Ala ta'kulun, will you not eat? Or do you not eat? Depending on the context. Similarly, wa means and. So wala means and do they not. Uh, in this sentence, and do they not know? Wala ya'lamun, and do they do not know? So awala ya'lamun, do they not know? Again, converting it to a sentence. Similarly, fa can mean so. So fala tasma'un, so they do not hear. Or oh, sorry, so you do not hear. Afala tasma'un, do you not hear? Or will you not hear? So you can see how alif, the alif uh, prefix can be combined with la or with wa or fa or even you know with multiple prefixes uh, together to make these compound words. Also, the alif can be combined with um later in the sentence to present alternatives. So for example, if I say antum a'lamu, that means do you know? Amillahu, or does God know? Do you know or does God know? You can see here Allahu is in the subject sent uh, in the marfu'a case, the word is in the marfu'a case. So Allah is also the subject of this sentence. So do you know or does God know? So the am um is used to present alternatives. It's usually translated as or. Okay, so that's how you convert a simple sentence into a question. But there are other kinds of questions you might want to ask as well. Where, how, how much. And so we will cover all of these different words in Arabic to ask these questions. So let's start with where. Aina. Aina is how you say where. So for example, Aina al mafar al mafar is the place of escape. Aina al mafar where is the place of escape? Aina tadhabun. So tadhabu means you are going. Tadhabun is the plural. You are all going. Aina tadhabun. Where are all of you going? All right. So now let's look at how to say uh, from where or how. And the word for that is anna. There are there's another word for how which we'll cover. But anna kind of means like from where. Like where is this coming from? So anna laki hada. From where does this come to you? And this is speaking to a, uh, a woman. Anna laki hada. Where does this come to you? Anna yubusirun. How do they see? Yubusirun. They see. Anna, how are they seeing? Okay. There are two words for when in Arabic. Ayana. And the more common word is mata. So ayana yawmuddin. When is the day of judgment? Mata Nasrullah, when is God's help going to come, for example? Mata Nasrullah, when is God's help? Okay, so Ayana or Mata, and Mata is the more common one. Then we have the more common word for how, Kayfa. Kayfa ta'lamun, how do you know? Kayfa tasbiru, how can you endure? This comes from having sabr, so tasbiru, to endure. To know, and again, this is being spoken to a group of people, 
This is being spoken to a singular person. Okay, so the word for how is kayfa. And then we have the word for what. So we have looked at the word ma before, and we've seen two uses of the word ma. This is the third use of the word ma, and it means to ask what. So ma ashabu shimal, what are the companions of the left? So ashabu shimali is a possessive construction, the companions or the people of the left. Ma ashabu, what are the people of the left? So you just put ma at the beginning. Mal Al Qari'ah means the calamity. Mal Qari'ah, what is the calamity? And this construction is often used with, in the Quran as Ma Adraka. What will explain to you? So, for example, Ma uh, Adraka Yawmuddin, what will explain to you the day of judgment? Okay. And then we also have an alternative of Ma, which is Ma Da. So, Ma can mean these different things that we've covered in the previous lesson um, as well. But madha always just has this interrogative meaning of turning something into a question. Madha yunfiqoon, what do they spend? Yunfiqoon, they spend, what do they spend? Madha ta'muroon, what do you order? Amara means to order, ta'muroon, you order. Madha ta'muroon, what do you order? Then we have why, lima, and again you have limada, which is also means why as well. But let's start with the simpler one. Lima. Lima talbisun al haqqa bil batil. Why do you mix the truth with falsehood? Lima takfuruna bi ayatillah. Why do you not believe? Why do you disbelieve in the ayat, in the signs of God? Ayat has a kasra because it's after B. Allah has a kasra because it's in this possessive construction. Then we have kam, which means how many? Or how long? Kam labitha? How long did you stay? How long did you linger? Speaking to a singular person. Then we have ayu. So ayu is very common. Um, it means which, or what thing. So ayu shayin. Which thing? And the word after ayu is usually in the uh, majrur case. So it almost acts like a possession. So ayu shay'in, which thing? Ayu al which of the two parties? So this is an this is a good example to to practice our dual case. Fariqaini is two parties in the majrur case. Remember, if it was in the marfu'a case, it would be fariqani, but this is in the majrur case, so it's fariqaini. Which of the two parties? Ayi suratin. So surah means um, form or picture. Fi ayyi suratin, in which form? So this is an example of ayyi coming after fi, so it also changes its ending to be ayyi. This is one of those rare interrogative words, those rare question words that can actually change its form. The other ones don't really. So kam is always kam, lima is lima, and so on. But ayyu can actually change its form. Ayyu ayatillahi, which of God's signs? Okay. So we've seen a lot of examples, so I won't give you more exercises. You can just practice the ones that we saw in the previous lessons. But I have given you some more exercises that you can try on your own. So try translating these uh, verses into English using the appropriate interrogative word. I will just mention one thing, which is the interrogative word almost always appears at the beginning of a sentence. So if you see this at the beginning of a sentence, you immediately know that the rest of the verse, the rest of the sentence is going to be a question and not a declaration. All right. Jazakallah khair. Thank you for listening. Just one quick reminder, which is if you want to improve your vocabulary, if you can translate the grammar, but you don't really know what some of these words mean, if you want to improve your vocabulary, I've linked in the comments below a Chrome extension that you can download that shows you a new Arabic word every time you open up a new tab. So try that out and inshallah you'll see your vocabulary improve at the same way that your gra grammar is improving as well. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.